signifying unto us the mystical union which exists between Christ and his church, which holy estate Christ adorned and beautified at Cana of Galilee. It is therefore not to be entered into unadvisedly, but reverently, discreetly, and in the fear of God. Will you, you may be seated. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 describes the love that the two of you share as you come to this altar together. The Bible says love is very patient and kind, never jealous or envious, never boastful or proud, never haughty, selfish, or rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudges and will hardly notice when others do it wrong. It is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. If you love each other, you will be loyal to one another no matter what the cost. You will always believe in each other and always standing your ground defending one another. Michael, Lindsay, I require and charge you both as you stand in the presence of God to remember that love and loyalty alone will avail as the foundation of a happy and enduring home. No other human ties are more tender. No other vows are more sacred than those that you're about to assume. If these solemn vows be kept, and if you steadfastly endeavor to do the will of your Heavenly Father, the life that you are establishing will be full of joy, and the home that you will share together will abide in peace. As you turn and face one another, Michael will begin with you. Will thou have this woman to be thy wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinance in the holiest state of matrimony? Will thou love her, comfort her, honor and keep her, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto her, so long as you both shall live? Do you so promise? Lindsay, wilt thou have this man to be thy wedded husband? Live together after God's ordinance in the holiest state of matrimony. Wilt thou love him, comfort him, honor and keep him, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto him, so long as you both shall live? Do you so promise? Michael, as you continue to look at Lindsay, please repeat after me. <laughs> I, Michael, take thee, Lindsay, to be my wedded wife. I, Michael, take thee, Lindsay, to be my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. Now, Lindsay, while looking at Michael, you repeat the same. I, Lindsay, take thee, Michael, to be my wedded husband. 
to have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. What token do you both offer that you will faithfully fulfill the vows you have just taken? These rings are an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace, signifying unto all the uniting of this man and this woman in holy matrimony to the church of Jesus Christ our Lord. These rings have no beginning and no ending and will serve as a symbol of your love for one another. Michael, as you take Lindsay's ring, place it on her left hand. And while doing so, repeat after me. With this ring, I be with. With this ring, I be with. I give it as a token of my faith. I give it as a token of my faith. I believe with all of my heart that this is forever. I believe with all my heart that this is forever. It is my love and my faith. <coughs> it is my love and my faith. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Lindsay, as you take Michael's ring. Place it on his left hand while repeating after me as well. With this ring, I be with. I give it as a token of my faith. I believe with all of my heart that this is forever. It is my love and my faith. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As a token of your two lives becoming one, you will now each light a single flame while extinguishing individual lights. Michael, you have been given charge by God to be the Christ figure in your home. Lindsay, you have been charged by God to be the church figure in your home. And the two of you, by loving one another, will vividly display the love that Jesus Christ has for each of us. It's been my pleasure to be your pastor and to get to know you even better over these last several months in preparation for this day. And I know that the two of you have a desire for others to know that you are followers of Christ. It's Christ who brought you together, who brought you to this day, and who will carry you forward into the future. Michael, Lindsay should never have to doubt your love for her. Just as Jesus Christ loved his church, died on the cross to redeem her, sacrificing everything to demonstrate his love, so you too will always do everything that you can to show Lindsay in tangible ways just how much you love her. In all likelihood, you'll never have to lay your life down. But it will mean that you'll need to die to her daily. That you will put her needs in front of your own. It may mean that you have to give her the remote control occasionally. <laughs> By all means, take out the trash. <laughs> For as much as have consented together in holy wedlock, and have witnessed the same before God in this country, and here too have given and pledged their love each to the other, and have declared the same by joining of hands and by giving and receiving of rings, I pronounce that you are husband and wife. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Michael, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> you may kiss your bride.